All right, and as it's ironic to me that some of this uh, controversy regards comments uh, that Kevin Williamson made about hanging or lynching, because it seems to me that this is uh, the character lynching of Kevin Williamson for something uh, th that is very undeserving of such a public humiliation. Well, really, the Atlantic caved to an online leftist mob, and that's becoming increasingly common. Like, one could ask whether any of the right of center columnists, as moderate as they may be, for example, the New York Times, right, like David Brooks, could have been hired in such an environment. And, and those who are comparing the Atlantic to, say, National Review or The Federalist, where I write, um, we are explicitly an opinion journal of the right. The Atlantic claims to be a forum for all different kinds of opinions as long as they are incisive and brilliant and well-written. And that fits Kevin Williamson to a T. And increasingly, we're looking at an, an environment where not only somebody who you know, writes for a living or expresses political opinions for a living like Kevin Williamson is under this kind of scrutiny, but you know, we had uh, Brandon Icke at Mozilla, we had James Damore at Google. It's increasingly clear that as a conservative, you are not allowed to make a living in this kind country if the, the radical left gets a hold, that sort of online lynch mob, as you said, gets a hold of something you've said out of context, they will come after you. They will try to destroy your livelihood. And it's, it's not even just that. It's, it's bled over into entertainment. Um, the NFL, right, is all about politics now. Uh, the, all the movies, Hollywood, um, sort of all the award shows, fashion, right? Every aspect of life has come under the purview of this sort of totalitarian leftist impulse to squash out any kind of right of center thought. And I think it's incredibly dangerous.